This division of U.S. Navy recruits is in week three of their 10-week boot camp. Get them up, Holcomb. It's supposed to hurt. Down. They're in Dead diet. what's known as an intensive training exercise, or ITE session. Push-ups. Get there. It lasts for about 40 minutes without Die. a break. Up position. I told you yesterday I was going to get mine. Y'all been pissing me off for a week. Between not working <laughs> together, thinking it's, it's a joke, and it's not. You arguing, not wanting to step up to lead. You're the lead or you follow. That simple. Stop with this individuality and work as a team. It Top takes it everyone off. a little bit, I think, to realize the big message. We are one family. We are one team. There are no more individuals. IT is not fun. It's to help you remember what you did wrong so that you don't do it again. We had enough? Yes, yes sir. No, the fuck we have it. This is Navy Boot Camp. Every year, more than 40,000 recruits graduate before becoming sailors and officially joining the fleet. It happens here at Recruit Training Command Great Lakes, located about 35 miles north of Chicago. RTC Great Lakes is the only boot camp for enlisted U.S. Navy sailors. Who's going to a submarine? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why? More money? <laughs> More money? Absolutely, 100%. Base pay for enlisted sailors is about $22,000 a year. Slow sailors up. commit to actively serve for at least four to six years, depending on their specialty or rate. There is no special skills required prior to signing that commitment. We were able to take any civilian off the street and transform them into a smartly disciplined, physically fit, basically trained sailor. I like that. I think the salary is a bit low though for what they get themselves into, but I'm sure their career development within the Navy is a lot like the submarine work, like they said, and all that. Do you think it's because it's an entry level? Yeah, it's entry level. Yeah. And like I said, he could get anyone off the streets. and. Tr so that's a starting salary. Then as you grow in your career and probably, you know, get... More te get get more technical jobs like yeah. rather than the the sailor job, right? Yeah. yeah. Then obviously you you that's when the pay increase will come. Uh, for example, a submarine driver, I'm sure he's getting paid like fucking. He's not getting paid twenty two thousand. Like eighty k or something yeah. at least, like for something like that. Boot camp begins with the night of arrival. Let's go! Hurry up! Hurry up! Uh -oh. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Buses driving from O'Hare Airport bring about 100 new recruits to the recruit in processing facility. Let's go! We want to put them in a stressful environment to, to show them that even though it might be stressful for them, they can get through it. You're moving too slow! And then it kind of like sets the tone for the rest of training. <laughs> They're running for what their life. What are you looking at, guy? Where did I tell you to look? Where? Where did I tell you to look? Welcome to Recruit Training Command. Answer the man. I'm Chief Walters. I'll be one of your facilitators this evening. When I tell you to, you will remove your cell phone. You're going to call home. Call your parents. Call your recruiter. I don't care who. But you're going to let them know that you arrived here safely. You have one minute. Go. What up, man? Hey, I just made it in. Um, I don't have long to speak. That's the goodbye call. I ain't going to speak to you for a while now. Wish me that, mama. <laughs> <laughs> like my phone's going off. But I just want to tell you that I made it safely, but I'm okay. You got 45 seconds, hurry up! I'll get through it. I gotta go, Mom. <laughs> the pressure. I called my mom. It was definitely emotional, though, because you kind of know that's the last time you're going to be able to yep. contact your family for a little bit. Love you very much. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Bye. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Yeah. What are you saying? Yep. It's yes, G. What is your problem, guy? What is your problem? Why are you moving so slow? You're on my time now, not your time. Hurry up. It was brutal, I won't lie. It was a uh, Damn. Class, we learning pretty much how to be a new human. You do not know what the f you're supposed to be doing at any given time. You will stand at attention until told to do otherwise. At no point in time will you look a staff member in the eyes. That's f rude and disrespectful, and that's the quickest way to piss us off. Is that understood? Shit. You better not look me in the eye. Ever again, disrespectful piece of. How about some motivation? Is that understood? Yes, <laughs> 
recruits receive their ditty bags. Stop. Hey, hurry up. Let's go. Get your socks off my table. Let's go. Which hold their different uniforms, hygiene products, and basic items they'll need for boot camp. Hurry up. Go, 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 go. Recruits must provide urine samples to make sure they have no drugs in their systems. Those who can't immediately provide a sample are ordered to hydrate until they can. Although male and female recruits sleep in different compartments, some train in gender-integrated divisions. After being assigned to divisions, recruits wait to meet their Recruit Division Commanders, or RDCs. Get the up! Let's go! My God! Back the up! Signified by their red shoulder cords, these RDCs will be with the... I'm not going to lie, I don't think I'll be able to handle someone shouting at me constantly. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to. I don't like shouty conflict it's not even conflict it's just too much high pitched noise i can't stand that <laughs> it puts my mood down there's other women here doing it they can handle Applaud it Applaud to these lot right now no, <laughs> i just, wouldn't be able to handle that yeah they're just getting like, mom i'm coming back home man <laughs> but like they said they're literally crafting you to a brand new person which they have it's gonna to. be not hard and love to do it they're cause... building warriors here yeah. that's what they're building and I get it, but Spartans. I can't stand anyone shouting at me. I'll be honest. I shut, I shut all down. The, time. the division until they graduate from boot camp. Did we say you could talk? They want to be here to be sailors. So that's our job to train them, to help them get there. Why are we so slow? Hey, you, isn't he taller than you? Yes, chief. No, chief. I, chief. We're not their friends. <laughs> We're here yes, to <laughs> make them sailors. Why are you looking at recruit? Do I owe you anything? You want them to be on She's got You want to get them out of their comfort zone. Booking Damn. is hard, but when you go out to the fleet, if you make a mistake, you're going to kill somebody. Right? Now his life's are at stake. So That's why they like that. Like I said, it's life and death. One yeah. wrong move or what, being slow here or yeah. doing something in, in, in a wrong way, you're yeah. fucked. We want them to understand that, that the bigger picture. Yeah, makes sense. Male recruits have to shave their heads. Female recruits can pull their hair back in a bun or wear it down as long as it does not extend below the back of the collar. The new recruits pay their first visit to the galley, where they eat in silence and stare straight ahead until they're dismissed. Get up and get up! They'll need their strength for their first test of boot camp. Come on, push it up. An initial physical assessment known as the pacer test. Everyone up. Timed intervals of push-ups, planks, oh, and running. Not every recruit shows up where they need to be. That's okay. That's what we're here for. Put your hands by your side. Look at everybody else next to you. Fix yourself. If we identify <laughs> individuals <laughs> that are struggling, then we can curtail the training to make sure everyone's on a level play playing field to be successful. Two minutes, on the left. Recruits have two chances to pass the test. Two, 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 six. If they fail, they're recycled into another division where they'll keep trying until they can move forward. In week one, recruits are tested on their ability to swim. Step. God forbid you're in that abandoned ship scenario where you do have to leave the safety of your ship. The Navy has deemed that we need to be able to implement a swim qualification to ensure your safety and the safety of your shipmates. You know why I'm looking at you. <laughs> I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I'm looking at you. I would fail. <laughs> them diving into the pool like that, if that was fat, yeah, she's finished. gone. I'm finished. I'm finished. Help me. Yeah, help. Help. Yeah, she can't swim. She yeah. wants to land, but she can't swim. <laughs> Everyone in the Navy has to have a third class swim <laughs> qualification. The Bad. third class qualification consists of stepping from an elevated platform. Servicing unassisted, swimming 50 yards, then doing a five minute prone on your front known as a prone float or on your back known as a supine float. I knew it's the Navy, you're gonna need to know how to swim a little bit. I had swam before, but I had never jumped off a diving board. <laughs> hitting the water, you're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that, it's a shock. But not all recruits are ready to take the lead. Yeah. Some she just got have pushed. To be pulled from the water during the test One time. and sent to remedial swimming, where they learn the basics of being comfortable in the water. That's me. So she, you, she, you would have got pushed. <laughs> They're like, shit, she's drowning. What do they do? <laughs> Grab her out, go to the basic training. That's me. <laughs> 
just asking you to try to actually calm yourself down and realize that the water is not going to drag you under. You know, you have to cooperate with it. Mm. We have a 99.97% pass rate. Uh, we have a higher pass rate for recruits that can't swim than the Navy has of making civilians into sailors. During week three, recruits report to the Marlin Spike trainer where they get their first taste of what it's like to be aboard a Navy ship. Hand over hand, positive control. Y'all literally just did this. What is the problem? Figure eight, one figure eight at a time. Once they do get to us, there's that nervousness. They don't know anything about a ship. It's scary. It's a big old vessel in the water, right? Remove the bird's nest. We teach them about how to communicate on a ship, how to tie a knot, transitioning them to be a sailor. This walkthrough, that was the easy part. Now the pressure's on. You f up, you f up. Each recruit is assigned a role that corresponds to a real member of a ship's crew. Make all preparations for getting underway. With the objectives of getting a ship underway and bringing it safely into port. Make all preparations for entering port. Hey! So at the bridge at the very top, you have the boatswain's mate, and then we have our bridge phone talker. Lines three and four, singled up, bridge eye. They're gonna be having comms with the other three phone talking stations down on the actual ship. Attention on deck, attention on pier. And that the petty officers in charge relay that message to the line captain. Fake down line going inboard, fake down line going inboard. The line captains have that script saying, single up all lines, take in all lines. Double up all lines high. Who the f is talking? It's loud, it's chaotic, it's hectic. Do because when it's very it must be very hard to keep on top of that organized because like she said it's very loud, it's very chaotic. Like you're trying to get communication, it's hard. I think what you need to do when you're in that situation, you have to stay calm minded. That yeah. way you can think and process your thoughts. Yeah. Whereas if you're like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm panicky. You can't be panicking, yeah. You're gonna it's sink so your hard. ship and everyone's gonna basically die yeah but you need to stay calm and collect your thoughts mm. and be able to guide everybody it's good advice yeah for sure when they're on the actual ship when they have actual waves moving that ship yeah, they mad. need to be calm cool and collected and resort back just to what you training. said when i say prepare heaving line for heaving that's when he comes over here you're gonna hold this so he can tie the knot Right. It's all about communication Teamwork. as well as following all the safety precautions. Anything that can get you injured, you need to make sure you're aware of what that is, make sure your teammates aren't doing it either. Watch your feet, watch your feet, watch your feet. Just standing there, they can be injured. Somebody can go overboard. Somebody can trip up on a line. Take it for myself because I've, I've eaten complete crap before, like falling on the deck of a ship, and it was not fun. One, two, three. Remove figure eights and round turn! Take figure eights off and then round turn! Move to safety zone! But seamanship starts in the classroom. What's a vast mean? Stop. Stop. Okay, next, what's next? Single up all lines. Folks who are. All stations, single up all lines. All stations, bridge. All stations, bridge, single up all lines. All stations, bridge, single up all lines. Single up all, uh, oh. single up all lines. It's like speaking a different language. You gotta get the hang of it. It helps that everyone else is doing it with you, so the more you hear it, it's all around you. Eventually, you won't even think about it. Just tell him the message. Bridge, single up all lines. It's Barney style. We we break it down Barney style. Barney um, like the dinosaur? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> single up all lines high. Perfect, just like that. This is called the confidence chamber. I don't call it the gas chamber. I don't call it the torture chamber. It's none of that stuff. It is the confidence chamber. The reason you go through this is so we can prove to you that the mask works. Does that make sense? Yes, Chief. In week four, recruits are exposed to CS gas oh, or no. tear gas in the confidence chamber. Who's nervous right now? Somebody tell me why you're nervous. I'm nervous about how my body's gonna react. Body's gonna react? It's gonna react accordingly. <laughs> what does that mean? Am I gonna just go on the floor and frazzle like a little curled it's up spider? It's gonna react how it's meant to react. <laughs> Basically, you're gonna get fucked. Yeah. After learning how to properly don and clear the masks, the recruits head inside the chamber and wait for their turn to step to the line at the front of the room. An instructor pours the powder inside the CS capsules onto a hot plate, filling the room with gas. No. Mask up, come up, let's go! Get that mask up! Get that top up! When they take off the mask, it only takes a few seconds before they feel the effects of the gas. 
Some recruits don't seem affected by it, but most struggle. They cup their hands under their chins to prevent bodily fluids from leaking onto the floor. Oh. What does it feel like when you take that mask off? It hurts, burns a lot. It's a good sinus clearer. If you're sick, you'll be able to breathe once you leave there. Timmy Kerr Morales, we did it to Recruits say their names and division numbers. And they're mocking it. She quite even, you know, Fats has a thing. She hates seeing stuff come out the mouth. Yeah, I can't. It makes whether it's movies, sick. whether it's thing, whether someone's dribbling, like, it literally makes her cringe. Yeah, I'm not even cringe. Vomit. I feel sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that they, I think. It, when they come out, this, I will continue to look at the screen. I think it's funny they're trying to make them say their command and their name or whatever. And it's like, these are just been affected by CS gas and they've got a shout out there. It's making them ready for the worst. You have to, though. If they just, if they don't have this experience and they go out into the open, like, they won't know, they They'll won't have a clue out. what to do. Yeah. They're, oh my gosh, I'm dying. You have to experience have this to. and know how to deal with the situation. A, and it's best to do it in a controlled environment. It's going to be even worse when they're going against their opponent. Yeah, and their opponent's the enemy. CS gas is even stronger. Yeah. At least it's in a controlled environment where it can be managed. They're not dying here. Yeah. In the real world, there's, they're potentially going to die. Yeah, yeah. Followed by a hoo-yah. <laughs> After about 15 seconds of exposure, they're allowed to exit the chamber. They're still dying. Oh yeah, don't look. Don't look. Fats can't deal with this. Can't it definitely wasn't that. fun. Definitely wouldn't, you know, sign up to do it again, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Hoo-yah, is it, eh? Yo, man, where my man yo, man at? <laughs> Later in week four, it's not that fault. recruits are trained to fight it's... fires. You never know when a simple fire will break out on board the ship. Any sailor needs to be ready to combat that fire to save the ship, aircraft, submarine, you name it. Controlled fires fueled by propane tanks simulate different types of fires that could occur on a ship. A lot of them don't understand that pressure that comes through the hose. As soon as you open up that nozzle, all that pressure starts to push you backwards. They kind of hold it nonchalantly a little bit. That it's powerful. one of the most hands-on experiences we got to do. Part of the teamwork that helps you realize that there's going to be points where your life is going to be in the hands of another person. It's important to pay attention because if you're not doing things correctly, you're putting someone else in danger. This is a training I want to do. And when we go to America, we're going to firing range, I'm blazing some sh some. Is that how you hold it like this? That's a gun, isn't it? I don't think you're, that's like child's play. <laughs> you're into, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get there. And we're going to hopefully get an instructor to show us the proper way to shoot. Because obviously we haven't done it in the UK. We don't have access to that. So it's you wish. It'll bounce back onto you. I'm, I, I'm bulletproof, man. Recruits train to safely fire the M9 Beretta pistol. Beretta. As well as to assemble and disassemble it. A lot so of people that this. come through here have minimal to zero experience. If something's incorrect, we, we fix it right away. If we see that some of them are kind of just a little bit too nervous, we'll talk to them, make sure that they're mentally okay, and make sure that they feel safe and they feel like they're in a good environment. Nice. Why should Navy sailors need to be qualified to shoot weapons? I would say most typically on watch, that's when we have to stand watch and provide some sort of security. If someone steps on board a vessel, anything seems kind of weird, um, kind of sketchy, then we would have to employ that weapon if things start to escalate. They definitely need to, because look at the pirates that we reacted to in the past. When you're out in the sea, you're coming across pirates, you're coming across anything. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared. And they got weapons. They got yeah. AK-47s. Yeah. You need at least a Beretta. Boot camp culminates with an event known as Battle Stations. Love it. It happens inside this building, which may not look like much from the outside, but inside, the recruits encounter this the USS Traer. It's a two-thirds wow. scale replica of a Navy destroyer ship designed and built by companies that created attractions for Walt Disney World. <laughs> Good evening, Division. Battle Stations is an accumulation of every training evolution you've done throughout BASIC. 
mixed with a little bit of sleep deprivation. <laughs> so I think it's the closest thing any of us are going to get to what being on a ship's like. Although the Navy agreed to let our crew film parts of the Battle Stations event, we weren't allowed to show major details of the scenarios or solutions to the problems recruits have to solve. Yeah, because if the enemies are watching and they're like, oh, that's how they, that's the solution they go to. So if that's the case, we'll do it this way. Mm -hmm. They can't show it. It's, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Yes! So it goes over 17 different scenarios from firefighting to seamanship, first aid. So all of those combined into one special night. A special and long night. Recruits are not allowed to sleep during the event. Doors go. I do not Who are you telling? I do not are care. you telling me? Are you telling Petty Officer? Or are you telling your CLS? Tell the CLS! Doors go COS! When they say when you get the no. fleet, you gotta be able to handle sleep deprivation, you really do. You have to be able to handle doing the right thing, even when it's very stressful, even when you're cold, wet, tired, sleepy, and even when your peers may not be in the right mindset either. The first scenario we saw involved a burst water pipe in a room full of ammunition shells that recruits cool. had to move while trying to patch the pipe. If you can't do it alone, firefighting skills to put out a fire that breaks out on board. That's cool. Proper sick training. We have all the sound effects, the lighting, the smoke, just because we want to make sure it's as realistic as possible. Uh, once you go out to the ship, if there is ever, you know, emergency situation that happened, we want to kind of reflect that here. The hell happened we were there? allowed to film inside one of the training areas built to resemble the damage suffered by the USS Cole in the deadly attack in October of 2000, with details down to the clock on the wall, which is stopped on the minute the real attack occurred. Ah! Wow. But when the scenario starts, recruits don't notice such details. People are dying! People are dying! They have to locate and evacuate a casualty through thick smoke, over obstacles, and in total darkness. Some people like working under stress because they say pressure either produces diamonds or bursts pipes. It was really fun. I would definitely do it again, maybe after a full night's rest. I was going to say, I'd love to do that, that part of training. As pressure as it is, it's like, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, escape rooms. But like real life scenario versions of like because this is more dangerous than escape. Yeah, room. I know, but this is obviously this is a real replica of what could happen. Yeah. But like it just reminds me of you have to evacuate this person in a safe manner following your training that you've been given. And I think like I'll just love to experience it. I think this is good that they've implemented this because they it allows them to put their skills together in terms of what they've learned over the last few weeks and put their training into use and see have these lot really learned. I can they apply it. Yeah. Can, can they, they actually apply do it, it in a pressure? real life situation? Yeah, so and good. like you said, under pressure. They've done well doing yeah. this together. They have to though, are not But I would hundred percent do battle stations again. It's a night I will never forget. Who are the Hype man. After battle stations is complete, recruits line up in front of the USS Trayer to receive their Navy ball cap, symbolizing their transition from recruits to Navy sailors. They realize everything that they have done thus far, all the, the blood, sweat, and tears they shed, they finally earned their Navy ball cap, and it's a proud moment for all of them. A lot of work went into that. Blood, that sweat, and tears. was extremely emotional. I was definitely more proud of that than anything I've ever done before. Nothing compares to that moment. Friends and family gather to witness their new sailors graduate <laughs> before joining the fleet. You see the change. You have some recruits that you never thought they were going to make it past training. But once they graduate and you see that, wow, they grasp the point of this, you know they're going to be out there, out in the fleet. It's really rewarding. Seeing recruits come off the bus with long hair, not knowing they're left to the right, not knowing how to wear a uniform, and seeing that transition that they make from a civilian to a recruit to a sailor is truly eye-watering and truly a blessing. Daddy, I live. Daddy, I live. My dad.
That was the Navy camp. Damn, that was some intense she. What did you think of it? It's amazing what they have to go through. Would I be able to survive it? I don't think so, I'll be honest. But then again, you say that. Obviously, you say that because mainly because of the swimming thing, I'm assuming. Am I right to say that? Oh, but you don't like people shouting at you? Yeah, and I just don't like people shouting, but I guess you have to go through it because they're training you and they have to grill it into your head. This is how you have to be. And the thing is, if, the thing is, it's different because like, let's just say you was thrown in that scenario, then obviously you wouldn't like it. But these people have come to them. Because the, they want they to join want the it, Navy. And on top of that, they know what to expect. They yeah. know it's going to be hard. They're not like, oh yeah, they're not being forced into the situation. They've gone there. With yeah, the I guess if so it was a case like where I wanted to join the Navy out of my own yeah. free will, You'll be more I open know to I would have to accept this. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they're kind of... I definitely, uh, the physical activities is something that I would like to do. Yeah, because she's a gym freak. The swimming thing... I'll just fail that. But no, but they said they have 99.8%. I, I, I still would fail with that. No, you wouldn't. You would not be <laughs> I'll, the, you I'll be the 0.1% that fails the swimming. You would not swimming. be the 0.2% that fails. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I, I think you'd pass. Do the need... Float. I'll be like, okay. They'll teach you. Like, <laughs> they say they've got people that never swim and like can't swim at all. Yeah, that's me. Learn. I still can't swim. Well, we'll see. Rest. Maybe you need to hire one of those guys, Navy guys, to do your swim. Fats, come on! But yeah, guys, thank you so much for recommending that video. It was a big insight for us here from the UK. We don't really get to see that kind of thing. So thank you. Keep commenting below what you want us to watch. And for now, peace out. Bye.